Hello guys, recently I posted a tweet about versioning APIs in Laravel and unexpectedly to me personally it goes pretty popular and viral with 160 likes with a lot of comments and bookmarks so at that point I decided to make a tutorial out of that. So we teamed up with my colleague Modestas and on Laravel Daily Com you can find 18 minutes long form tutorial about versioning because it's a very deep topic like why you need versioning in the first place and when to think about it, also how to implement that. And this is a premium tutorial for premium members on Laravel Daily Com with the video version as well, which is 11 minutes long. And here on YouTube, I will post the short version about the essence, how to implement the versioning of version one and then how to move to v2. If you want the full video version and full tutorial, the link will be in the description below. In that tutorial, I expand on why you need versioning, also about some ver versioning like minor version 1.1, also versioning with headers, and a lot more small details, including the links to other resources for you to read. So all of that in the description below for premium members. And now let's focus on the main thing on how to implement the API versioning in this video on YouTube. My first piece of advice when you're starting API project in Laravel is to introduce versions immediately. Even if you're not planning version 2 or version 1.1 at the moment, just add this and your future self will thank you for that and future developers. Just declare that now we have version 1. For that, in route service provider, you just change that global prefix to just slash v1. In the future, there will be v2 if you want to, if your project survives until that. But basically, this line means that whatever routes are in routes API PHP, they will be automatically prefixed to the endpoint with slash API slash v1. And then you should generate controllers also with v1 prefix like this one, lowercase or uppercase, that's your personal preference, because when v2 is coming, probably there will be new routes for v2 and new controllers for v2. With other files, it's debatable. You may or may not also introduce prefixes for API resources if you use them, form requests if you use them, and other stuff. The database layer should stay the same, so the models will likely not change for v2 unless you're recreating the full project. API is mostly about app HTTP layer, controllers, and routes. So those should be prefixed with v1 from the beginning. Why? Of course, your project would survive even without that prefix at the moment, but it kind of gives the stability to your users, to the consumers of your API, that there is a stable official v1. So it's not version 0.1 or whatever. Now, if you decide to create a new version 2, let's get to the how to do that. First part you already saw earlier, you just create a new routes file. You can call that API underscore v2 or dot v2, that's your personal preference. And you put these lines into route service provider. Alternative approach is subdomain routing like v2.something.com, but I'm not a big fan of that personally, because we're not dealing with websites here and domains. So I don't see many people use that, but it is possible. And then your choice is how different is that version two. You can start creating that from scratch. So creating new controllers, new routes one by one, and then copy parts of the older application to that. Or alternatively, you may copy everything from V1 and start deleting and changing files. That depends on how many changes are in V2. So practical example based on one of our previous courses about Booking.com API. For example, there was a Booking API endpoint and there's a new requirement, legal requirement to introduce guests as a required parameter for the Booking in the database. So internal changes first, the model, the database structure and the relationship. Then we introduce a new controller or in fact, it is the same controller of booking controller. We just copy and paste that into V2 and add more functionality here. Then since there are new validation rules, we also do the same with form request, which is also a V2. And there were old fields copied from the version one and there are new fields here. And also new eloquent resource because it contains a separate resource for booking guest, which is then included in the version two of the main API resource of booking resource like this. So basically you change all the files to V2, which are related to app HTTP layer and routes. And this is exactly what we're doing next, exposing V2 in routes. In addition to that familiar line, we do something like this. 
So new file v2, use controllers with v2 namespaces here, and then everything else as usual. Separate open question is about other internal files of your application. For example, you have services. So whether it is worth to copy and paste and make v2 of those services, it depends. There is no one recipe or one answer here that I could recommend. If there are significant changes, then put them into v2. Otherwise, you may want to edit the v1 version to support both API v1 and API v2 with different parameters. That's it for this video on YouTube shortened version. If you want the full version, again, the link will be in the description below. 18 minutes read or 11 minutes video with more examples and getting deeper into that topic. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.